Hello everyone, welcome to part six of this real time tutorial. Um, in this one, we are going to be starting the white fur. Um, and in this particular video, we are going to be mostly focusing on the white fur on George's face. Um, and then probably in the next session, we will work on the white fur on his chest and the final bit of ginger fur, which is over here, which will be on his back. So that'll be kind of like a finishing touches session. So hopefully we're starting to get to the end of this process now. Um, if you want to watch the previous parts, do take a look at my drawing tips and tutorials playlist. All the previous parts are in there, um, but I'll make the playlist appear at the top of the screen now so you can have a look. Um, and if you're interested, I'm using Faber-Castell Polychromos coloured pencils and the paper is Fabriano Artistico hot pressed watercolour paper. So, Firstly, I'm going to show you the colours that I'm planning on using. Um, as always, I may end up using more than I've selected at this stage, um, but this will be a good start. So, the first one's probably quite obvious, a white pencil. I'm actually using a Caran d'Ache Luminance white pencil, um, just because I don't actually have a white polychromos pencil anymore. I really like the Caran d'Ache one though, because it's very soft, great for blending. Um, then we've got a couple of greys. I've got cold grey one, very, very subtle grey, um, but that's what we need for this sort of thing. White fur, you want very, very subtle colours. Um, also got warm grey three. I may use like a, um, a lighter warm grey at some point as well. Um, I've also got cool, no, not cool, cold grey three. It's in the pencil extender, but that's another good one. Um, we want a nice creamy colour for the slightly more warm parts as well, so I've got ivory. And finally, for any parts where the skin is showing through, I'm going to be using beige red, which has already been used quite a lot on this particular drawing. So, let me just put my pencils down. And we'll start off with this fur down here going down his nose and then we'll work towards the sides. I always find that the best colour to start with when doing white fur is to start with the cold grey one. You want to start off with very nice subtle colours and just build up very very carefully. Um, white fur it's all an illusion, it's mostly made up of shadows so there will be lots of greys in there. Um, in fact there isn't really going to be much pure white um, but you do need to be careful not to go too dark. So I'm just going to sharpen my pencil, bear with the noise. Okay, oh, that's actually just broken it. So let's try that again. Okay, about 10 minutes later, I finally sharpened this pencil. It's now quite short. It seems that it had a lot of broken lead inside it for some reason, but never mind. These things happen. Um, I'm just going to place a bit of paper down on this bit here just so that it's protected from my hand where I rest it. So what I'm going to be doing first is looking at the reference photo and trying to spot where the shadows are on the white fur and I'm just going to gently start to fill those in. Um, I'm going to kind of go with back and forth motions with the pencil. I'm not necessarily just going to do strokes of fur at the moment just because it is very light um, but I'm pressing very gently and just kind of going back and forth like that on any bits that are a bit more shadowed um, and that is especially kind of near the ginger fur along this bit here because I suppose they do kind of merge into each other quite nicely and it does kind of go into a bit of a shadow in the middle here as well. So just really take your time and just watch where you can see any slight shadows. Definitely a bit darker up the top here as well. Okay. 
I mean, it is important at this stage with going back and forth gently with the pencil to still roughly follow the direction of the fur. As you can see, it can be harder to tell um, where the fur is going when it's white fur. But where the shadows are should give you a little bit of a clue. And there's a definite shadow that goes down the right hand side of the nose here, which will help give it a bit more shape. Um, and it looks like the hairs are kind of going sideways in a way. So I'm just carefully following that pattern. And there's a darker bit down here, so I'm just putting a little bit more pressure on there just to emphasise that shadow a little bit more. I'm also going to start shading in a little bit of grey just above the nose because you can see there is a bit of skin showing through. I will be using some of the beige red in a moment on there but it is a slightly grey pink so I am going to put a little layer of grey down first and because it's quite a smooth section I'm just using small circular motions with the pencil and pressing very very gently the pencil is only just resting on the paper pretty much. Don't really need any more than that. Lovely. And already this section is looking like it's come to life a little bit more rather than just being plain paper, which is just what we want. Now going to add some of this warm grey. It's a little bit darker, so I'm going to be extremely gentle with it. And this particular shadow around here does want to be darker. So I am going to very carefully add a little bit more in the same way. I'm actually going to do some individual first strokes along here because you can see a bit of texture where shadow meets light. So I'm just going to do a few little strokes there just to achieve that texture hopefully That's definitely looking a little bit better. And I'm also gonna do some gentle first strokes in some other locations as well to add some extra texture where needed. So we'll start with coming from this ginger fur here, and this will help to emphasize that direction of the fur by doing very, very short, light first strokes, or pencil strokes, should I say. I find with white fur I feel like sometimes it can be very slow a lot of the time it is but I feel that sometimes depending on 
what it is it can actually be quite quick because not that many layers are necessarily needed but it does very much depend on a lot of things so hopefully you can see we're getting a bit more texture down here now Want a little bit from the other side as well. And it's almost just like I'm doing little dots. They are actually short lines, but they're so short that they are almost dots because the fur on the nose of a cat is very, very short. And of course we want each pencil stroke to be um, equivalent to the length of the hairs. I'm now going to add some of this warm grey to any other bits that I feel could be a little bit darker. And this time I am using individual first strokes still, just to increase that texture. That's looking good. Um, down nearer the nose, I'm going to add a little bit of the ivory to add a bit more of a cream tint. And also on this shadow here as well, because it's definitely got quite a warm tone to it. So that will help with that. I'm not really doing um, individual hairs here. I'm just gently colouring over the top just to add a bit more colour to it. And let's do the same down here. And it's now time to get some pink in there where it's closer to the nose. So this patch here is definitely the pinkest, so I'll add a little bit more pressure here. As we move away, just very, very gentle pressure. We just want a hint of pink coming through. He has actually got a couple of little markings down there so I'm just going to go in with a brown pencil just try and select the right one won't be a moment okay I think walnut brown will be a good option just going to give that a quick sharpen just got a couple of little dots here um, I'm just actually going to add a few more little bits of hairs with that colour that's more like it and add a little bit more brown around the edge of the nose and sometimes you will move on to a new section but find that other things need to be adjusted and that may well happen um, in like the last 
part of this tutorial I might go back to various bits just to improve the quality if needed for example I might add a little bit more to the ginger fur that I've already done if needed um, I might decide I want it to be a little bit richer and don't be afraid of doing that it sometimes it can take doing more of the drawing to recognize if more needs to be done okay so we do need some more gray now so I'm going to go in with the cold gray three and individual hairs again just to increase a bit more shadow above the nose I think we could do it with a little bit more on this shadow as well. just continuing to add a little bit more texture and shadow where needed with this colour. We're definitely almost there already on this section. Um, we could do with a bit more pink I think above the nose. I just need to make it a little bit darker on a couple of bits so I'm going to be using cinnamon which I've used quite a lot previously as well just to fill in this bit of pink here make it a bit darker and add a little bit more pigment just above the nose as well my white pencil to blend things together a little bit so I like to still do individual little strokes in the direction of the fur but just kind of going over what I've done with a little bit more pressure just to soften it and blend it all together make it all a bit more seamless I do often start to colour back and forth a little bit more as I go on. There isn't really a right or wrong here when it comes to technique. Okay, that's all good. And we now just need to go in with some final bits of contrast. I'm actually just gonna find a slightly darker gray that we can use. 
think I'm going to try one very five and this is going to be used very delicately um, just to add some final texture and like um, little shadows kind of between the hairs which will increase the contrast in that texture so I'm just going to sharpen it I am going to start here and again just do very light and small hairs We do definitely need a few in the middle here as well, just so that it's not like two random shadows and then just complete whiteness. I do feel that the top of this shadow has just got a tad dark so I'm just going to use my putty eraser I'm just moulding it into a bit of a point and I'm just going to dab it very gently just to lift a little bit of pigment and also just soften it slightly that's better there we go so yeah some very nice textured fur there. I hope it's not looking too grey. It looks greyer through the camera than it does in real life I think. However I am just going to pick up a little bit of pigment down here as well. Yeah that'll be fine. Now on to the next bit, let's move on to his right cheek. We've got a bit more space to work with now, which I think will make it a little bit more fun to do. A little bit limited on what we can do in there. So first thing I'm going to erase the outline because we want that to be nice, soft, fluffy white fur. Perfect, so I can just about see it still. This bit here could probably be a little bit lighter. There we go. And I'm going to start with the cold grey one again, so that we can start subtle. And I'm just gonna mark out the edge first, just so that I don't forget about it and lose sight of where it is. So I'm just going to use a bit of paper again. Now I want to be going in the direction of the first straight away and I'm just kind of colouring it in very gently back and forth. Just so that we're straight away getting a bit of texture. I want to try and make the edge nice and fluffy so make sure it's a very 
soft line towards the end so you almost want to flick the pencil off the paper slightly so that it's not a blunt solid line at the end. So yeah, I'm doing a mixture of back and forth colouring and individual strokes. It's so hard to explain um, what method I use at each bit sometimes because I do find it can vary so much. But this is where trial and error is going to come in when you practice. Just watching one tutorial like this probably isn't instantly going to make you perfect at what you do. I mean, I'm not perfect either, but you know what I mean? It's still going to take practice because yes, I can tell you what I'm doing and show you what I'm doing, but I still can't get you to feel things in a certain way. So that is where practice is hopefully going to help you. And this area is definitely going to look more grey than you may expect because we've got a white background. We don't want the fur to be too white, otherwise you're barely going to be able to see him. So again, this is where we're just going to be producing the illusion of white fur. It's a little bit darker down this bit here so I'm just kind of going back over it again with a bit more pressure and I'm allowing myself to kind of overlap with the ginger fur a little bit so it's a bit more seamless some brown. Just rub that out and try again. Yeah my pencil kind of dragged over this bit and there's a lot of pencil pigment there so it then took it back so I just need to be careful not to touch that bit too much. And still I'm using kind of a mixture of back and forth and individual fur strokes and still just generally following the direction of the fur, adding a little bit more pressure on the more shadow parts to mark it all out. If you look at the reference photo, we'll definitely be needing more detail kind of up here, um, but that we can do all with the darker greys shortly. And it's definitely a lot more shadowed behind the whiskers, which is good actually, because then we'll get some contrast from where I've used the embossing tool. This is where the whiskers are going to come to life a little bit more, hopefully.
So where I am making some bits a bit darker where there's more shadow, I'm not worrying too much about fine details here because again, I can do that with the darker greys in a bit. But at least it's all being mapped out and I can tell where I need to aim for. With these shadows forming we should start to see the shape of this bit here appear a bit more where the whiskers are coming out because it's definitely lighter this bit here where it's kind of further forward and then it's darker a bit further back here so it will start to make this bit look a little bit more 3d down the cheek a little bit more on the edge. Individual pencil strokes. It's hard to see anything appearing at the moment but it should do more as we add more layers. for a little bit of warm grey we're going to go with warm grey three because it is definitely of a warmer tone around this section so just going to very gently colour it in back and forth again on the darker bits ivory down this bit here just a very small amount is cooler down this bit so I'm going to use cold grey 3 rather than warm grey 3 on that bit and as it's a little bit more textured around here I'm going to start going in with individual pencil strokes
Now you can start to see the texture that's forming around here. So I just have to keep building that gently, making sure we're leaving any pale bits showing through where we want it. And bear in mind, direction of the fur is going to vary quite a lot on this part. So keep paying attention to that reference photo. And just most importantly, just continue to draw what you see. Don't let your brain overthink things. a little bit dark here so I'm just going to use my little Tombow eraser just so it's got a bit more control than my putty one just to open up the lighter parts a bit more again starting to build up now. I feel like the main thing I'm focusing on is just varying the pressure on this pencil where it's needed. So more pressure where it's darker, lighter pressure where it's lighter, or even not doing any of it at all on the lightest bits. starting to move out towards the edge with this pencil I'm using it very very gently because I don't want it to get too dark everywhere because this bit over here is definitely more shadowed just to add a little bit more variation need a little bit up here as well Okay, so I think now is a good time to do a little bit of blending on what I've done here so far. And then we'll add some slightly darker detail where it's needed. So I'm actually just gonna go back and forth with the pencil following the direction of the fur, staying quite gentle with it. Okay, 
and you can already see that's kind of softening this area here bringing it all together just be careful as we get near the ginger fur because we don't want to be contaminating the pencil and smudging it everywhere white fur here so I'm just going to add that in with the cool, uh, cold grey one again that's more like it looks a bit more substantial now now back in with the white looking a bit softer now and now it's time to use warm grey five again so I'm going to start with doing the fine detail up by the eye here there are kind of little lines separating the bits of white fur Here could do it being a little bit darker, I just noticed. So I'm going to add some cinnamon to it. There we go, that is better. And I'm continuing to just be extremely gentle with this pencil, very similar to what we did with it over here. <laughs> Just adding it very gently where we could do with a little bit of extra texture. the whisker area because we do need deeper shadows around there I 
the bits where I want it to be a bit darker. So especially by the whiskers here, I am adding a little bit more pressure. I'm still being cautious because I'd rather just do a bit and then have to add more rather than have to undo it. time to add a little bit over on these shadows here. I will build up this area a bit more when I erase these outlines so I can get into that section a bit better. We'll just finish off this cheek area first. It's very challenging actually to get the edge here a bit more realistic looking. I think I'll try adding a bit more cold grey to it. Maybe a little bit more pressure. So I think we need a bit more contrast between the fur and the background colour. That seems to be looking a bit better now actually. Just what we needed, just a little bit more grey. And yeah, it's just being brave enough to um, convince yourself that it doesn't need to be fully white because that's not what it is. It's a lot of greys, as you can see here. Just takes a bit of time to train your brain that that's what you want. onto this little bit here so I'm just going to erase the outline so I can actually move into this part a little bit more I'm hoping that when I expand on this bit this shadow here will make a little bit more sense I think it looks a little bit random there at the moment My putty eraser is just struggling to get this little bit here, so I'm just going to use this mono eraser. Just because it's got a little bit more strength to it. And we're 
looking good. So I'm going to go back in first with the cold grey on this bit as I have done with the previous sections just so I can start building up and the shadows. So I'll start by working along this little line. You know there's like a little line where the whiskers come out of? There's just a little bit more shadow there. So we'll focus on that. And there is a little one down here as well. And then to make sure this whole bit pops forwards, there is going to be a shadow around the edge. So I'm going to get that filled in straight away. And I'm just colouring back and forth again at the moment, but still kind of following the general direction of the fur. But we will add some more texture and detail again shortly with the darker greys. as well but I am going to do individual strokes of fur because if you look at the reference photo you can see that there are bright white bits of fur showing through and there's kind of greys in between so I don't want to get rid of the bright whites of the pieces of fur so if I do individual pencil strokes it means there will be little bits of white lines showing through which should hopefully give us the general effect that we want there. It's kind of going in a similar direction, the fur, but it has got a little bit of variation, especially on this bit. So some kind of go that way, slightly some go that way a little bit. So do make sure you make it look as natural as you can by adding a little bit of variation. does kind of get a little bit longer as we head towards the left hand side only a little bit so don't go mad but you can make your pencil strokes a tad longer as you work your way back towards the whiskers around this bit so I am doing more pencil strokes making them a bit more dense and closer together I'm also adding a little bit more pressure to the pencil as well just to deepen that shadow There is some skin showing through so I'm going to move on to beige red and I'm going to be using a very similar motion just because I don't want to fully get rid of the white I'm just going to do individual pencil strokes along here slightly just to add that slightly pink tint Now 
There we go, that should do for now. And I'll now move on to warm grey three, which is a bit darker, so I can start to deepen those shadows a little bit. I think we'll start on the left hand side and move, move our way over. So we'll focus again on that line of shadow where the whiskers coming out and the shadow underneath this part that sticks out. I don't really know what to call this bit. I guess this would technically be the cheeks, wouldn't it? But I always kind of think of this bit as the cheeks. I'm not too sure. <laughs> um, but hopefully you know what I mean. So I'm going to be doing individual pencil strokes along here just so we can start getting a bit of texture. But I'm being quite gentle with it to begin with. It's all going to be quite dark in this bit here, so I'm going to already add a little bit of extra pressure. But still keeping the pencil strokes individuals if I'm drawing the hairs. Um, but as I move my way down towards, well, away from the shadow, I'm gradually decreasing the pressure but still kind of using the same technique just so that it can gradually fade into a lighter section of the fur because we don't want a harsh line at the edge of the shadow Sometimes I find it's easier um, if I'm doing shadow kind of behind some pale fur, I find it easier to do the pencil strokes the other way. So going, kind of going tip to root, so like this, because then I can get like a softer transition between the whiter fur and the shadow. So I'll do that along here, just so that it looks a little bit more seamless. the white fur here does change direction so I'm then gonna kind of do a layer on top of it pushing it into the correct direction it goes more sideways away from the chin but at least those initial strokes have got this bit here correct Now I think the darker parts on here are slightly cooler grey so I'm going to move on to using the cold grey 3 and I'm going to add a little bit more detail on this shadow here. I'm going to do more pencil strokes throughout now just to start adding a bit more texture and contrast. 
but I'm keeping it very gentle. By the way, if you can hear any sounds in the background, it's just the washing machine. Um, I don't know if it will be hearable when you listen to this because, of course, there's going to be music in the background. So that might cover it up, but if you can hear it, that is what it is. So we definitely need to add some more shadow down here. So I'm just going to add a little bit more pressure. So before moving on to um, the darkest of greys, we're just going to blend together what we've done so far with my white pencil. So I'm just going to gently colour over what I've done. Time to use warm grey five to get the deepest shadows. So we need to get quite a lot darker in here. We may even need a darker pencil than this, but we'll just see how we get on with this one. May may or may not need another pencil. I might get away with just using more pressure. And I'm doing the first strokes backwards again, just so that I can get the softer transition between the shadow and the lighter part. But then when I'm moving away from the shadow downwards, I'm then going back to the other direction and gradually decreasing the pressure.
I'm trying to soften the edge a little bit along here where the ginger fur is so I'm trying to use this grey to increase the shadow along there as well. We'll see how we get on with that. So I'm just going to sharpen the pencil so I can add some finer details. Because uh, I want to get a bit more contrast in the palest parts again and also add a bit of depth to where the whiskers are. So we'll start over here. Let's try and read the pencils out of the way. There we go. I'm being extremely gentle with it again. It's literally just resting on the paper. I'm not applying any pressure onto it. I'm just remembering to build up a little bit more around the bottom here where it is a little bit more shadowed but I do still want a contrast between this bit and that bit. So I may add a slightly darker colour here just to add a little bit more contrast. I am going to be using dark sepia, I'm just going to sharpen it. It's a very dark, but it's not quite black or anything like that. It's still slightly grey. And I'm just going to do a few little pencil strokes with it. And that should be enough just to add that extra depth that's needed to the shadow.
but I think that's looking all right. So next, before we move on to the right hand side, just want to add a little bit of chin fluff down here. Uh, let me just move. Ooh. Let me just move the paper up a little bit. So I'm just using cold grey one. I'm just kind of continuing the fur motion from where it's ginger to the edge of the chin. straight away hopefully that will make quite a nice soft transition between the ginger and the white fur and then just to add a little bit of extra I'm just going to use cold grey 3 and just gently add a few more strands just to get that texture there a little bit more let it run into the ginger fur slightly just to again make it a bit more seamless the transition my slice tool just to add a little bit of detail around here just to add some slight highlights add a few little strands of hair that are a little bit whiter it's probably going to be quite a subtle detail using this to pick up a few little bits sometimes I find that when I can't blow them away or if they're not brushing away just dabbing the putty eraser onto the bits of residue just picks it up but if you do that bear in mind it may pick up some of the pencil pigment which you might not necessarily want this bit's gone a little bit stripey it's just going to blend that back together again this little bit here is a very very subtle bit of white fur there it's mostly going to be grey but I'm going to be going straight in with individual pencil strokes just so that we can get some texture there from an early stage there's also going to be also going to be a bit of pink there as well where the lips are here so I'm going to continue to do some individual pencil strokes for kind of working from the lip outwards and we do want to be a little bit darker so I'm just going to add some more bits of fur with the cold grey three. And I'm 
just going to add a little bit more to the lips here with the grey pencil. Just because it is a slightly pinky grey look there. There we go. That should do the trick. And now onto this final little stripe down here and this part here. And then after that, I'm just going to add a little bit more detail to the gin, not necessarily the ginger fur, but just add some little bits so that it's a better transition from ginger fur to white fur. You'll see what I mean shortly. So I'm gonna just be coloring back and forth with the cold gray one, following the general direction of the fur, but marking out where there are gonna be deeper shadows. erase this bit of outline here. actually doing individual pencil strokes here because the shadows are already quite stripy and textured so I don't really need much of a grey base layer. done first because then it's out of the way so just very gentle pressure individual pencil strokes following the direction of the fur which kind of goes out sideways at the moment progresses into some darker shadow down here next to the whiskers and next to this deeper ginger fur here so I'm going to start increasing the pressure still doing individual pencil strokes very much the same motion here the fur is all pretty much going out sideways um so we're just building up the shadow but do make sure you leave some bits of paler section showing three because of course there are going to be highlights there and if you look at the reference photo there definitely are some strips of paler white fur But when we get a bit close to the chin here, the contrast is quite important again, just to make sure we can see the difference between the chin and the background fur, if that makes sense. 
we don't want it to look like all one wall affair. So I will add a little bit more pressure around here. Okay, time to blend what we've done before we add the final details with the darker one. Just need to blend what we've done up here. This bit's going to stay quite light. that's looking a little bit softer now. I've just noticed I feel that this bit here needs a little bit more shadow so I'm just going to add that now while I'm thinking about it. So I'm going to kind of go that way so that I can achieve shadow between the white hairs. It was just looking a bit too pink and bright for me. Same the other way. That's better, that instantly looks more real. Just going to do a similar thing here. Let's try and get a bit more texture. And now start building up some extra shadow. Just very gently though to begin with, just kind of see how things pan out. I'm doing these pencil strokes with the darker grey quite close together um, next to where the ginger is but as I move further out I'm doing them a little less regularly just so it's more of a scattering of that colour just to make it nice and gradual. shadow down here which I'm going to add I think that's going to help with the shaping of the face a little bit because it looks a little bit wide down here so that shadow will give the illusion of it being a little bit narrower cream there because it's almost like there's a hint of ginger fur but not quite so hopefully a little bit of cream will just add that slight tint that we want 
just colouring back and forth over it generally because that will hopefully blend it a little bit more as well. just to narrow it down a little bit there we go I'm also going to add some extra highlights with the mono eraser along here as well so I do feel that some bits have got a little dark so just a few sweeps with the eraser will just add some of those highlights back in a few more ginger bits to make the transition a little bit better so I'm going to use I'm going to start just by using burnt ochre that might be enough but if needed I can use some other colors as well so I'm going to kind of go from here and gently flick a couple of ginger strands into the white fur just so that they can overlap slightly and the transition can look a little more natural rather than being such a solid line between. So that's already looking better there. To be fair, that wasn't too bad initially. We need a little bit more ginger here anyway. definitely needs to be softer along here however I think I'm going to use a dark pencil there I am going to try using burnt sienna which is more of a ready brown and again just flicking a few strands of fur into that white fur just random ginger splodges. slightly darker ones here as well very very gently and we could just do with a few up here as well just a few little strands a little bit more 
depth to these little flecks of grey under the eye here. And finally, while I'm here, just adding extra touches to the ginger fur and its transition to the white fur, I just want to add a little bit more darkness to this chin. So I'm just going to add some more brown strands. I'm using uh, walnut brown. Just because now that I've added some white fur around it, it just looks so it could be a little bit more dark and the shadows can be a bit deeper. So it's up to you, if you're following along doing the same drawing, you may find that you don't need to do this. Of course, our drawings aren't going to end up exactly the same. So as I said, yours might be okay. But if you feel that you do need to add a bit more darkness, then go for it. better so that's that white fur done now on his face um yeah it's amazing how just some white fur can help bring him to life more because it's easy to think that before this video he had the ginger markings so surely it is going to look like him even though it's just plain white but actually just adding the shapes and the shadows has just really helped finish sculpting his face so yeah it's really nice to see him coming to life a little bit more so next video will be hopefully to finish it um it may be a slightly longer section but we'll finish the white fur on his chest and do the little bit of ginger up here and if anything needs any final touches on the face we'll do that as well but we'll see how things get on but for now we're looking good so i hope that was helpful let me know if you have any questions and i'll be back soon with the rest of this tutorial thank you so much for watching have a lovely week